Hello, I'm Robbie Fowler and you're watching Redman TV. Can you ask a more general question about, in your, every week when you have a match, and the analyst guys in the, in the team, the, the performance guys and the video guys, and the, can you just give us an idea of when you approach a game and after the game, how, how, how it works? Well, it works like um, we have always a uh, few papers, the analysts of the opponent uh, that uh, Brendan and their, his staff give to us just normally the day before the game that we can we can read and go through the strength and the weakness of the, the, the other teams. We normally have uh, a few videos, a uh, few meetings to to exploit the, the you know the weakness of the other team and, and maybe to to see to watch our own performance and why what we could do better and put on the, the training the training pitch training ground to, to, to get better. But it, it, every player has their own style to 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 prepare for a game. But uh, in terms of analysis it's more or less like that. Normally we have a meeting the day before the game just before to training where we you know we'll maybe work in some set pieces and the way we we can we can exploit the the, 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 the other team and then go to the the last training session and prepare and the, and then we have a meeting just before to go to the stadium. So just on the, the level of detail, would it ever go down to say like these players, um, you've got to be matched up against this guy directly in the opposition and he's going to do this and expect him to do this and you can exploit him doing this? Uh, in the Premier League, we, we know everybody, to be honest. Um, right. We know how they play and if you tell me a few players, we, I, we know the way they like to play and the position they, they, they get into the pitch. They ju it's just a, something to remind you and make you even more aware uh, because, of course, if comes a new player that we really don't know, maybe they will they will show us the way he plays. And mm. but like, normally we we know most of them. So like a, a, a surprise, like say Cazorla or something, yeah, Santi Cazorla or something. <laughs> no, because no one knows what he will do. And... Maybe you don't. <laughs> I don't. I, I've, wa yeah, I've watched him many times in Villarreal yeah. and. Uh, and Spain, Spain national team, and I, I, I was sure that he was going here and, and do very well because he's a he's a different player and he's just proving uh, every week that uh, what he's capable of. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. You've been here five years now. Um, you've worked with four different managers, so you've seen a few different regimes during that period. I'm just interested to know whether you honestly think, uh, not that we hope, whether you honestly think with the current setup that the club and you will be five years in the future, and, and how do you see your roles changing during that period? My role? I'll be 30, <laughs> uh, uh, ho hopefully fit and strong, yeah. <laughs> and still here. And uh, well, in five years, uh, I can see we are achieving a lot of things. I think, uh, you know, uh, the last three, four years have been very difficult and I think uh, this difficult moment will be gone sometime and uh, we'll start to, uh, to achieve and, and to, how can I say? Uh, Win the league, that's the word. That's why not. We have to, to to have this dream and this in mind. And uh, I think everyone is ho working here to do that one day. Uh, we know at the moment uh, is not uh, is not being possible. But uh, if you see few players like uh, Daniel Agar, Suarez committing themselves to this club and signing new deals, just show how much uh, these players believe. So. I don't think nobody would want to stay in a club that we really don't 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 think we can win win anything, especially for foreign players. I think because if you are so away from your house, for your family, I think I think we I should think uh, you know to have a great career in away. So that's what I what I think. So I think in 
picking five years. I, I just hope we we can be winning the league, maybe the Champions League. Why not? I think we have to believe on that, and I think this club is is already already showed many many people that uh, are capable of to do. Why why we cannot get back? And, and how do you see your role in the team potentially changing over the next few years? I don't think my role will be changing much. Uh, maybe if it, if I was an offensive player, normally the offensive players try to drop in. I don't think I will be playing as a keeper in five years. <laughs> uh, so I think it will be more or less the same. Uh, holding midfielder, and, you know, more experience. And, and third, I will be in a good age still. And just, just quickly, I, I think it was a previous briefing where Rogers, Brendan Rogers spoke about quite warmly and globally about how tactically aware you, you, you are. And he mentioned that he might send you on some scouting missions. <laughs> no, uh, listen, uh, yeah, when, when I had the injury, he, I spoke with him and he said if I wanted to go to watch some games with his staff, sorry, uh, with his staff, just to make me, you know, be part of the, of the game and still looking some tactics and, you know, when you are injured, you don't go outside, you, you don't see the training session, so you just... <coughs> Just to make make you feel out of the you know the team and the football to be honest. So he just asked me if I if I wanted. He just I, I could I can decide and uh, it's not uh, something that I have to do. So but uh, it's been it, it was good and uh, hopefully I'll be I'll be going soon. Thank you. Okay. All right. Is uh, I know a few have asked a couple of questions. Anyone that's only asked one? Does does anyone want to ask? We could probably squeeze in two or three more. I think. And if, um, just more on a more general point, seems to be on the agenda lately. Uh, I'm kind of reflection of Phil Neville Handball. Lewis Schwab has done that in the World Cup for Uruguay. And uh, the coverage was, well, that was the start of the vilification. Sergio Aguero made an interesting comment the other week saying that English players tend to get privilege over foreign players in regards to what they can get away with and what they can't. Do you think Lewis is unfairly treated generally? Um. I don't think we, we should compare English with foreign players. I just think the foreign player, maybe what they do, it's more noticed. Uh, why? I don't know. Uh, maybe because we, if we don't know the language, we, we don't know how to express in the pitch with the referees. And uh, so just, I think, uh, it just make the life more difficult for for, for us as a foreign player. So it, it will always be like that. Maybe in Spain or in other countries we'll, be, we'll have this comparison, but uh, I, I just am sure what Luis does is just uh, everything that he does, uh, it's more, everyone notice more. When he had the penalty against uh, Norwich, we, we didn't see many comments about that. So it's it's just you know it's just hard and I just uh, I just can say that Luis is a very great guy and a very family man and uh, he's a different person on and off the pitch and and that's why he's uh, such big player because he has the, this attitude and he wants to win everything and on the training pitch the sessions he, he doesn't like to lose so it's just his character, and, but uh, I just uh, I'm very close to Louis, and uh, I just feel sorry sometimes for him because it's hard. But he's a uh, he's just uh, worry what the Liverpool fans thinks and what the Uruguay people think. So that's what matters for him at the moment. And um, but he's a he's a very nice guy, and uh, sometimes you have uh, you know. People that uh, criticize you, maybe not know you very well. So you just have to accept that and uh, just keep doing what he's doing, and and that's why he everybody would love to have him on the on the team. Saying about the golden samba, it must be incredible for you after the journey you've been on. You've got completely got. I mean, the lady T-shirt, for instance, it's, it's appeared like the Levi's one. You must feel brilliant. When yeah, as I said, it's just. Uh, it's just an award that uh, my hard work and, uh, and maybe that feeling that I had, I was not wrong. So it's just uh, just feel feel proud of it, and that's why I'm 
even in a bad period now, I'm um, just uh, really looking forward to come back and, and help because I think, uh, you know, I have a lot of to offer. Thanks, Jesus. Okay. Wallace, do you want to ask you a question? Thanks. Um, you mentioned about um, uh, what happens in Brazil and what happens in the support. Um, and you, the, the bad periods over here have coincided with um, perhaps our support not being as positive towards you as it might be. But uh, the way Liverpool fans support players, is that really, really important to, to somebody like you? The positive support? It is, it is. Uh, as I said, I think uh, if you have uh, supporters backing you and so giving you confidence, I think uh, the chance that you have to success, it's higher mm -hmm. so I, I came here very young so I didn't have the experience in Brazil to have a bad period uh -huh. everything was five star for me there and I won awards and everybody speaking about me so so it was my first experience with you know a bad moment mm -hmm. so that that's why I felt a lot but uh, as I said uh, if I I wouldn't change anything of my career here and and I think just helped me to to be a better player and 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 to to enjoy more the the, the good times so uh, that's what I'm looking for to have another one yeah that's good and I just say that my wife looks forward to seeing you back on the pitch at the same imperious level you were last year I hope so <laughs> Bob Oh, we've just, uh, first of all, just let Lewis know from the Max Gorn support, he doesn't have to worry about the, what Liverpool supports his team. We love him sure. and we believe. I'm sure he doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you played in a, for, for Liverpool in the same role, basically a holding midfielder, but you've done that in a four man midfield. Mm -hmm. I suppose under Hodgson, it was a flat four. Rafa, maybe five there in midfield. Now, Brendan's talking about you playing in that role when you're back to full fitness in a three midfield. Yeah. T technically wise, does that, I assume, that makes your job an awful lot more difficult or does it? No, I, listen, I think uh, if you have three men in midfield, you have one man more if you play in a four. So uh, I think you just share jobs more than in just in a four. Because uh, if you are a holding midfielder uh, in a three, you, your, really your role is to get from the center box and start the moving. Uh, you won't be able to get forward, maybe sometimes, but not often. And, and your, really your role is to, to give a good pass and, and make the other midfielders or the wingers or the striker to be able to create chance. So if you are playing a 4-4-2, normally you'll be able to get more forward and maybe take the risk a bit more but in a three uh, more rigid especially because the wingers always is so high and you have to cover them because otherwise you, you get too much exposed so if you watch the players that uh, normally like uh, Busquets in Barcelona he always is around there and never gets so too much forward and if you watch uh, Arteta now playing for Arsenal He's like an offensive player, but he's not doing much offensive work because he has to stay there, otherwise the, the back four stay too much exposed, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But, um, as, you, as you said, uh, injury caused that you're a little bit out of team, but despite the results, results that Liverpool is gaining, um, we see an improvement in, in the team's style of playing. Uh, how do you enjoy it as a, as a Possible fun as we are, like, like you watch the game from the stands or in a TV. Sorry, I think just um, uh, how do you uh, how, how do you, you see the, the how the team are playing at the minute? I know you're watching it from the stands, but yeah. you see an improvement. I just would like to mention one one game that uh, was against Fiorentina that we lost, but the first half I think we played one of the best football this season. I think we we just control the game and. Somehow, in 15 minutes, 20, we concede three goals. Udinese. Udinese. Udinese, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Udinese, sorry. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> uh, Udinese, sorry. Um, 
because we I think we played a very good football yeah, in the game. first half and uh, we just concede three goals. <laughs> See, you are out of the game. You don't pay attention. <laughs> no, I'm joking. And. Uh, if we see the first half, as I said, we, we just played very well and 20 minutes we just uh, conceded three goals and, and I have seen Brendan say lack of concentration and when I think when the team is not used to, to have a lot of possession, when you have the chance you to get uh, distract, it, it, it's higher, so it's what he's working a lot on it. If we have the ball, we have to be concentrated all the time. Even if you give a five-yard passes or a two-yard passes, you have to make sure it's right. And when we watch Barcelona, it's sometimes who is watching becomes boring because they pass, they pass, but they know exactly what to do and, and they are always focused. So it's what he's trying to to put it. So the style is important, but uh, win it's it's imp more important as well. So I think uh, if we can put uh, both together, will be will be will be good. You cut that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I won't speak with Fresh you anymore. <laughs> we'll take uh, yeah one from Sarah. We'll do the last two in the back, and then we'll call it quits. Is that okay with you, Sarah? Um, I don't think anyone's actually asked. How is the injury? The injury, it's, it's going well, it's going more or less the same, the plan that uh, we had between, you know, 10 to 12 weeks. So, uh, as I said, it's just uh, because it was so close to the other one, I just, you know, it will take me maybe a bit more to, to get my fitness back and if it happened maybe one year time, maybe it would be not be more positive, but maybe I would be back maybe quicker. So just uh, for me as well, for me, my confidence, I think it would be important to, to be 100% fit and, and because if you play two, three games and get injury again, I think it's not, it's not good. So it's important to maybe delay maybe one or two weeks and get ready and, don't, and, don't, and have a full season. I think it's more important for, for me and for the team as well. Mike? Lucas, there's been quite a lot of coverage over the last week or so of this new St George's Park, you know, that, that England have got, and the sort of aspiration of the English FA and the English people as a whole is that we can bring through a generation of, of kids who've got better technique. Why do you think that so many players from South America and the Latin cultures seem to have be so much better than the English players technically because they don't have St George's Park, you know? Do you know if you're with the yeah, that's why, because we don't have this, that's why we have to improve <laughs> a bad pitch. No, uh, no, I think it's just the way it's coached. I, I think uh, I can see English players, they are very good tactically. And they, you know, they just uh, do what the manager does. And the South America normally, they do whatever they want. <laughs> And it's not good as well, but uh, the way I used to, to learn when I was a kid is, is ball. Uh, it's not much about tactics, it's just getting the ball and play a good football and uh, that's, that's the way I learned. So I think if, if you can mix and Brazilian people are start now to coach more tactical because when South American players used to come, they used to, to take too long to, to understand the game. So uh, that's why we can see now Oscar in Chelsea. Tactically, he's very good, but technically, he, he's still, you know, it's very promising and very good as well. So that's why it's, it, it's, it's becoming more difficult to, to a club in Europe buy a, a South American player. A few years ago, with anything you could buy a very good player, but today it's not that easy anymore because you know the players they are adapting quicker, so the value will go will go higher, and that's the way it is. But uh, I, I think it's important that uh, have giving the English players condition to to improve, and the young players we can see Liverpool have a wonderful academy and. And we can see now players coming through and, and having a very good season and so I think it, it's it's very positive. Last okay. question with Dan. 
when you was your football hero? Who did you pretend to be when you were playing in the streets? No, I didn't pretend to be. My hero was Ronaldo and Romario, but I knew I wouldn't be close to them. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, both, uh, especially Ronaldo, what he, he had through his career with the injuries and, you know, he, he especially playing for Brazil, he was amazing and 2002 when, when we won the World Cup and uh, it was uh, an amazing feeling and but both was, uh, they were my, my heroes uh, on football, yeah. Thank you. And you cut that, no? <laughs> <laughs> um, what Monopoly piece do you use? <laughs> Monopoly? When you play Monopoly, what piece do you use? The dog, the boot? Uh, uh, wheel wheel barrow. Barrow. The, I can't wheel Monopoly for ages. There's a wheel barrow on that one. If not, go. buy two. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You cut that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Lucas, I'll give you the contact. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure it's